Hey gorgeous, this is episode number 307 and we have so wonderful Andrea Freeman back on the show today. Hi, this is Andrea Freeman and you're listening to Heart Cells Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy! I am so excited to have Andrea Freeman back on the show today. We are going to talk about your personal evolution and how this fuels your business evolution. Andrea believes that transforming your life is actually the access to transforming your business. She is a mindful business coach and she works with creative entrepreneurs to help them align with their unique purpose and their intuition so they can more easily grow a successful impactful and profitable business. So let's dive right in. Well, I am so super pumped, Andrea, to have you back. Welcome. Great to be here again. Thanks. Yeah, I just loved our first conversation, you know, about journaling, mindfulness, creating this intention and just really being who you are because everybody else is taken anyway. So why bother to pretend you are someone that you are not and making life more complicated? <laughs> I, I would I would love to go in. So we, we discussed a little bit before about your work and yeah, basically how, how awesome and amazing you are. And I love that you created the host your life method. So could you help people? Well, first of all, explain what, what it is and then help us understand how we can use it to create a thriving business and a personal life that is really worth living. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, uh, you know, you bring together the fulfillment piece as well with the business. That would be really, really helpful for the audience. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. So I, I love entrepreneurship. It has been one of the most incredible vehicles for, for developing as a human being that I've ever had <laughs> in my life. And I really operate from the principle or, or the mindset that your personal evolution can fuel your business revolution, that your business can be only as strong and as expanded um, and have as much impact as you personally have done the work to do so. So I, what happened is that I, you know, in synthesizing the personal development work that I had done and really working with very high net worth, high, you know, celebrities and high net worth clients in my planning business, really got to see a lot of the similarities that were helping my own business thrive and that they were doing at, you know, at a very high level as well. And then pulled it all together in this host your life uh, method. And that is really the four principles that people can ground into to be able to be fulfilled in their business and in their life. And so host, it's an acronym that stands for um, the H is honor your why. The O is own who you truly are. The S is shift your perspective. And the T is to take inspired action. Mm -hmm. And so I really work with coaching clients to ground into their why. It's incredible to me to see how many people have a why, like a mission statement for their business, but not a why for them in their own life. What makes them tick? Why they get out of bed every day? Um, and what gives their life purpose and meaning that could extend beyond one business. I have a why in my life that I've been able to carry through multiple businesses. So, um, you know, which, it, which gives you unique purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And has your meaning that you say your life has go beyond just a business effort or pursuit. And then in wanting to make our our lives as simple and as easy as possible um, where where things where our actions become much more effortless is when we really give into the co-creative process whether you call it god whether you call it the universe it is really in that expanded relationship when um, you know when we have the ability to ask for 
answers to things that we're confounded by in our in our logical mind and opening up to that relationship. So that's the second part of the process. And then the third part is shifting your perspective. So that's really looking at the conversations that you're having with yourself, the conversations that you're surrounded, like what is your tribe? What does your network look like? How are those conversations supporting you or not supporting you? Where do we need to curate those? Where do we need to shift, upgrade, discard, you know, make new declarations um, and get to ultimately our highest perspective, our ability to be able to dwell in the space of anything is possible. I'm grateful for everything that I have. And uh, here's what I'm creating. And naturally, when we're in that place of being as filled up as, you know, that sh those mindset shifts will get, will get you, um, you're be inspired to take action and to take action in your business. Very often, you know, it can look like, Oh, I've always wanted to do this. I've always really had the desire to do that. And to create instead from a place of so filled up effervescent overflowing that natural actions become like they start to call to you. It's, there's very little force involved. There's very little pushing or manipulation. It's very much an expression of who you are and what your business is here to make available in the world. Cool. Well, could you give an example? Yeah. Um, so, well, I'll give you like my own personal example. So for me, um, I was 25 years old when I started to have that question of like, what is my life really for? What am I here for? Um, and I had been, I went to school for education. I was a trained uh, public school teacher. And about six months into that experience, I got really clear that this is not where I'm supposed to be. Like, um, and like so much respect to, to school teachers for, for what they make available in the world. It was just not the place for me because I couldn't be as creative as, as I need to be in order to be fulfilled in the work that I do. And, um, and that was a shock to me, by the way, just like a little side tangent, because in school, when you're studying education, you are very creative. You are creating curriculum, you're designing things. So I thought that that's what it was going to be like. And then you get out and it's like, here's this book, teach this, only teach this and make sure they're ready for the test. Right. So it was very, very different. And so I had to like figure out what I was going to do next. And at that point, I was hosting a lot of dinner parties and very, very excited to be um, sharing food with people. And I was doing it from a very much a wellness standpoint because I'd gotten very sick when I was teaching. And so I decided to go to culinary school. And it was because I got very clear about what my purpose was, which was to connect and inspire people. And that is something that I used my you know, my culinary business for, then I used, it transitioned into event planning. And really now it's still a very big part of what I do with my coaching. And now I'm not just connecting people to their own like community and inspiring them with beautiful parties. I am now connecting people more deeply to themselves, to their higher perspective, to, um, you know, a universal, more divine conversation and inspiring them to show up as their best version of themselves for, for themselves and for their businesses and for what they want to make available in the world. So that's, you know, that's the H and the O, that's the honoring and the owning. And the shifting really happened for me in the practices. And so I do every day what I call my soulful and centered morning. And that really looks like waking up and uh, pretty much going right into uh, that. I do, I have a meditation practice. I do some journaling, which we've talked about. Uh, I do some visualizing and some affirmations. And then also I uh, usually try to get in a little exercise. And from there, from that higher perspective, that really kind of shoots me out in my most, you know, grounded and centered place. Then what actions am I inspired to take that day? So, mm -hmm. so that's what the process looks like for me and, you know, in my business and that, and that's very similar to what I guide my clients through as well. Yeah. I love that. I, I think it's so important to, to have that level of clarity so that you understand who you are and you also understand that if you 
don't really like who you are, you can shift that into the person you want to be by shifting perspective, by letting go of beliefs, by changing environment and so on and so forth. So you are not even trapped in who you are. And I just love this creation process. Well, and that's the, that's the amazing opportunity because we are the source of, of all of it, right? We're the source of our own happiness. We're the source of our own misery. And we get to choose not just like day by day, but moment by moment, uh, you know, what we're going to be generating basically in the world for ourselves and, and for everyone who we come into contact with. Yeah. And, and that's also what I loved about sales, like, or what I started to love a long time ago when, you know, sometimes when I got upset because, you know, a client said no, and I couldn't get it because it was this amazing value and they didn't take the opportunity, right? So sales also, and being in business, you are in sales all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it also gives you the opportunity to have that change moment to moment, right? If yeah. One conversation doesn't work out well the next one might be your next premium client mm -hmm. so if you allow exactly. yourself to be upset and stay upset for the rest of the day or the week or the month or whatever you might miss that opportunity you could create something new in an instant yeah and that's a huge perspective shift i think you know for for new business owners especially we'll often get into a space where um you know, the sale mattered so much and there's so much, they get very, very intense about it, which often repels in the sales process. Yes. Um, but also like every client isn't for me or isn't for everyone, anyone. Right. Yeah. And so I think that that when we get clear in our businesses and in our sales processes that, you know, we really only want to attract the ones who are the right fit and you know, I try to kind of compare it a little bit to dating and, you know, like you, you want to spend the rest of your life with the one, you don't want to spend the rest of your life with the one that you're trying to make the one. Oh, good perspective <laughs> in all ways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because the problem is you can't make them the one. <laughs> right. They are or they aren't. <laughs> yes. So how, yeah, how does, yeah, let's, let's take this further. Like how does it apply mm -hmm. to, to business, to clients, to really choosing as well? I feel oftentimes people feel they have to take clients on board because the clients pay them. And uh -huh. I, I do disagree, but let's see your perspective. Yeah, I completely disagree actually. So I believe that our job as business owners is to be really grounded in who we are and be shining our light and, you know, marketing in a way that consistently communicates. This is who I am. This is what I make available. This is who I am. This is what I make available. I compare it very much to being like a lighthouse and calling the ships into Harbor. Uh, you know, all you're doing is as, as the person at the source of it, it can feel a little redundant and that's okay. It is really very, very clear. And people are, so many people are coming in and checking it out and, and then, oh, this isn't for me. And then they're leaving. But the right ones will say, I'm going to stick around for this conversation because I think that there's something here. And the more that they hear it consistently, the more that they're convinced and then they reach out to you. So that's what ultimately converts marketing into sales. And so when we are very clear about who we are and what we make available and then calling in the right people, the sales conversations, one, are more fun because we're already talking to the right people, right? We just want to make sure the circumstances align. Um, and when we are then clear about why we offer what we offer the way we do, right? Like why I charge the prices that I do, why I have the process be a certain amount of time, why it takes a certain amount of time to deliver the services or the goods. Um, you know, when, when I am grounded in my expertise and the well thought out process that it is, then I can communicate in a way that it's either a fit for you now, or maybe, you know, maybe you're going to want to check it out again later. And, and I'm less intense about this one has to be the one that works out, right? 
Now, at this particular moment in time, I feel there is a lot of intensity, a lot of scarcity, a lot of like, this could be the only client I talk to this month. This could be, you know, or, or this year. I mean, there's so much uh, shifting so rapidly uh, with the current state of the world that I feel like now more than ever, we need to be very, very clear about that the universe still is abundant, that there really is still so much available and that we are doing the work, whatever that looks like for us to make sure that our perspective is as high vibe and as possible as, you know, grounded in possibility and uh, opportunity and, and not so intense because I can't say it enough that intensity it is it is it repels i don't want to say repulsive but that that's what i was going to say it it is it's the difference but i mean i had a sales experience a few years ago where me and my husband were looking for a new car and we walked in and said this was going to be a new car for me and that salesperson continued to talk to my husband all day long like i was not even there and this is actually a line of cars that like really markets itself to women right they're always talking about their safety standards and the this and that he should have been talking to me but he was so stuck in his perspective about to make this sale it was going to happen with my husband and that sale did not get made and then he continued to hound my husband. <laughs> and it just made me laugh so much. Like, a, you know, this outside perspective, like, wow, this guy's just not willing to, to look at, at, at a new way. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, that's so interesting. You know, at, at, at one, one moment, I want to laugh about this because I think, well, what a story. On the other hand, I think like that happens so often to women that it also upsets me. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I don't know the numbers in the States, but um, here in Germany, big decisions or bigger decisions this investment wise, they are actually made by the women. Oh, here too. Yeah. So why would a guy talk to a guy just because it's a car? <laughs> <laughs> and I know the women, right? I mean, I think we could go on, we could do a whole show yeah. about this. <laughs> oh yeah, we, we could. And, and, you know, just some other people came to mind that I had similar conversations with online, offline. Uh, we could do like a whole event around this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and what you said, the, the sale did not happen. You went somewhere else. So it's, it's such a pity, right? And the consequences it has, not just for the car dealership, but for the person, for their earnings, for their family, for their possibility, for their dream creation, it just goes on and on. And you just went somewhere else to get your meets net, uh, uh, met. So, yeah, I, I mean, the if customer, you think about it. The customer will always tell you too. If you're listening, right? Like we walked in and said, this is a wife this is the car for my wife, right? Like this is a car for me. And, and still like, you know, you have to be listening. You have to be actively engaged. Yeah. You can't just be ready to launch your sales process on someone. And because you miss all the valuable information that they're giving you. Yeah. And also you miss the joy and the fun of how a conversation could go if you allow yourself to open up to a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, but this is something that every business owner or every person listening can really learn from. And even if they have experienced it or thought about it already, like going back to where are we not 100% listening? Mm. Right. Huge. Where are we missing out on some really important, tiny information that we could have used to make the experience better for the customer? Or to maybe even, you know, win them as a client because they fully got the picture of what's possible. And I, I think it's a great example because it shows how it's not working. So mm -hmm. everybody can learn for their own businesses. Like, where are you so focused on presenting what you have that you totally forget about the person who is supposed to buy it? Yeah. I used to have a mentor and he would say that if you say something, the minute someone else stops talking, when did you think of that thing you were going to say? 
If you're thinking about the next thing you're going to say while someone else is talking, you're not Mm. listening to them. So, um, you know, like to really slow down conversations and be actively listening and taking in the information that the person on the other side of the table is giving you will totally allow you to steer the steer the conversation and not in a manipulative way, but in a responsive and very respectful way. Yeah. Well, people want to be heard, but if you are already preparing your answer while they speak, so, you know, you have the right objection handled or whatever the reason might be, then you are not listening. And so they are not hurt and they will feel that. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so interesting. I, I, I just love that. I think it's so valuable for people to really craft their sales skills. And, and the sales skills is not just the business, it's everything, right? Like how are you listening in your relationships? Oh, everything, everything. And it all impacts everything else. So, you know, these are skills that cross the board that are hugely valuable. And I think for me in my businesses that I found when I slowed that sales process down, when I did more listening than speaking, I got more clients. I mean, you know, I love to track the numbers and see how many, you know, prospects turn into actual customers. And, um, you know, the, the facts were undeniable when I, when I implemented this strategy, you know, it's funny even to call it strategy, just listening. It, it, it should be natural. It should be what we're doing. <laughs> um, but we're the intention, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, when I shifted the process and, you know, and and it's in the beginning, it seemed like maybe I was going to list, I came with a big list of questions and I wanted to get through all my questions and we had to go in order. And, and, you know, and when I started to be a little more natural, a little more organic about it and really just, you know, I guess probably had enough knowledge information about why I did my business the way that I did. I was able to be in those conversations in a very different way. And I feel like people really they buy you before they buy your product or service. They buy your vibe. They buy your energy. They buy the way you talk, the way, you know, your perspective is. And so I think there are so many ways to communicate that, that are, that go beyond just what you're saying. Uh, And all of those things have to be aligned. And so that's really, you know, really important to come to the table with whether it's a physical table or the phone call, but, you know, with the confidence and with the understanding that you are, you know, the right person to offer the services that you offer the way that you do. And that we're just looking to see if this is a fit, very different way to come to those conversations than I'm going to convince you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, to- totally. Yeah. It's like the flow. It's the fun. It's the excitement of co-creation. Absolutely. That's, that's what you do with your clients. You co-create. Like they come with a challenge, you have the solution, but still you co-create because they have to do the work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have to get your point across in a way that they can understand and that they can execute and get results. So I, yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing this. And to get really, really clear, you can actually just journal for five minutes a day. (laughs) It's that easy. (laughs) It's that easy. It's not complicated. And Andrea has brought us a wonderful five-minute journal that you can get and download. The link is going to be in the show notes and the resource section. But tell us a little bit about like five minutes. Everybody can do that, right? Five minutes, so easy, and we're really grounding into abundance. We're really that that step in the process where we're shifting our perspective and you know really making sure that we are able to see from from the clearest view, which is usually much more elevated. Um, and so this is a really quick and easy way to ground into gratitude, abundance, and ultimately creating and cultivating joy every day. Oh. How beautiful. Who, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> right? Thank you so much for this, for this beautiful gift. And you guys go and, and get your download and please use it, right? Don't just put it in your resource folder. Like print it out, use it, do the exercise, and you will see how grounded and more happy you will feel. And we would love to hear from you what has shifted because of you using the five-minute journal. So just send us an email to info at com, and yeah, let us know where you are on the journey. 
Well, thank you so, so much, Andrea. This has been fun and, you know, I could go on forever. <laughs> it's, it's just so great to talk to you and, yeah, to feel your vibe and to really get an, more insight on your business. I there's think it's amazing. Thank you for your beautiful work. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Could you just feel that wisdom that Andrea transmitted via her voice and what we talked about? I just loved this conversation as well. And, you know, I could have talked forever, especially about journaling, about putting in the effort to become your higher version, the better version that you can be, because the more you grow, the more your business will grow as well. So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab. There you find Andrea's episode number 307 with the show notes, the transcripts and the amazing free gift, the five minute journal, as well as all the links that connect to her and her wonderful work. It's just one click away. And if you're wondering if you could actually have a pipeline full of clients, I highly recommend you get your free ticket on the Heart Centered Lead Generation Summit. You will find the link to the summit right in the resource section or in the experience tab on the top of the page. And when you sign up, you have access to 40 wonderful and highly successful entrepreneurs sharing their knowledge on lead generation, organic, paid and through partnership so that you can fill your pipeline with amazing soul made clients and never ever have to worry again where you find your next client and you can work with ease, with grace, with confidence and grow your business to make your dreams come true. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. And I'm saying bye for now.